Uh, so let's welcome to the stage right now, very funny gentleman. Please give it up for Freddie Kuhn. <laughs> Thanks for coming out tonight, guys. Thanks for staying up. This is past my bedtime. I, uh, I've been married for 19 years. Thank you. It's not a big deal, thank you. I married myself a trophy wife. She's just a participation trophy wife. My wife's really short. She's uh, 4 foot 11. Like, yeah, another inch shorter and she would have qualified for a handicap, handicap parking placard for being a midget. Right? Unfortunately, she's too tall to be a midget. She's almost a midget, but she doesn't really like that term. She finds it offensive. She prefers nearly a midget. You know, uh, when you first get married, there's a lot of like sorting through different things and, and you, you, you realize that just because you were raised one way and your spouse was raised a different way it doesn't necessarily mean that your way was right or their way was wrong. It just means their way was stupid. <laughs> As newlyweds, uh, I, I found out that my, one of my wife's idiosyncrasies was she would always leave like drawers open. Yeah, which makes sense. You know, she has really short arms. It was hard for her to reach, but... <laughs> you think she'd be more cautious, too, because they were always at her eye level. But... <laughs> and the thing is, this motion requires the same effort as this motion. It doesn't require anything ex extra. It just requires a good upbringing. It wasn't really long before I realized that uh, open drawers didn't bother me that much. Not nearly as much as not having sex, so. Pick your battles, gentlemen. She bought uh, a bagel slicer. This is uh, just, it's essentially a really expensive machine that will cut uh, just bagels. You know, like a knife. And, uh, she was really excited about it too, and, and I could understand why. I mean, we probably have bagels at least once every four months. You know? <laughs> and uh, I just didn't think we were gonna see a return on that investment. I was like, hey, you know these bagels, they come pre-sliced, so. <laughs> you know what's better than a bagel slicer? Having sex. <laughs> When, uh, when we first got married, I asked my mom, I was like, hey mom, what kind of birth control works well? And she said, well honey, I can tell you what kind doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> I've got eight brothers and sisters. <laughs> Apparently the only birth control that worked for my mom was menopause. <laughs> so, um, we, uh, my wife and I, we, we have a beautiful family. We have three amazing children. Oh, thank you. We got another kid, too. <laughs> you know what's funny is, when you have teenagers, everyone is like, oh my gosh, just wait. Oh, they're so hard when they're teenagers. They tell you these horror stories, but what you don't hear is the other end of the story about how fulfilling and rewarding it is to actually have teenagers. And that's because it's not. <laughs> Having a teenage son in the house is like having a pet, like, like a pet goose. <laughs> Mom! Mom! Can I go to Billy's house? Mom! <laughs> Turn, uh, 43, I'm going to be turning 43 in a couple months, and uh, as I'm getting older, I'm learning that I, I keep... Oh yeah, thank you. Thank you. 40, 43. I'm, I keep hurting myself, but it's never from exerting any physical effort. It's always something like, I used the wrong pillow last night. I'm walking around like this. My friend's like, oh man, did you get in an accident? This? No, no, no. It's actually a really interesting story. 
uh, I hurt myself sleeping. So. <laughs> you just never know when zero physical effort is gonna like creep up on you and do you in. <laughs> Last, uh, about a week ago, maybe, maybe two weeks ago, I threw my back out while I was showering. Washing my foot. I was doing like the flamingo wash, you know? Yeah. And it's really tough to walk around and people are like, oh, what happened? You're like, oh, I threw out my back trying to work up a good foot lather. <laughs> Sorry, I'm so thirsty. Um, my mom was recently diagnosed with dementia. Uh -oh. Yeah, it was sad. We had to put her down. <laughs> We checked her into a senior living facility, assisted living facility, and um, I was like, Mom, what do you think about your new room? And she looked around, and she was like, Well, honey, I can tell you what kind doesn't work. <laughs> That's a savage joke. Uh, I read in an article recently that uh, the Bostonian accent is the sexiest accent in the United States. What? Yeah, that's what I thought. So uh, I clicked on the uh, interview at the bottom of the lady who performed the survey, and uh, and she said, but Tommy makes me wicked hot. He's got the abs. The abs are so sexy. I love Tommy. <laughs> Do you think that people from Boston have to change their accent when they're using, like, when they're dictating to Siri? <laughs> Hey Siri, find me a parking car. I gotta park my car in Harvard Yard. Find me a parking garage. Beep, beep. I found one awkward smog check in your area. Would you like directions? <laughs> my 10 year old daughter, I asked her uh, a little while back, what do you want to be when you grow up? And she said, I, I would like to be an influencer. I was like, Pick a different career, huh? An influencer is typically a, a young girl wearing a bikini, taking selfies and posting them with a daily motivational quote. <laughs> Speak your truth. <laughs> Be yourself. <laughs> Face your fears. <laughs> Oftentimes, they will um, they'll partner with a, a company to kind of push a product, or or, or they'll they'll partner with like a, a cause. Like uh, I'm so proud to help bring awareness to breast cancer prevention. <laughs> I almost threw my back out on that one. Again. I'm pretty sure the only people they're influencing are teenage boys and dirty old men, but. <laughs> they say that passing kidney stones is as painful as, as having a baby. And the reason why they say that is Be quiet, women. <laughs> the reason why they say that is a man's body is not designed to dilate like a woman's body, right? And my wife, she'll remind me, you'll never know what it feels like to push something the size of a cantaloupe out of something the size of a peach. And she's right. However, I do know what it feels like to push something the size of a snow pea out of something the size of a macaroni noodle. <laughs> And uh, after passing that kidney stone, I had to go to my doctor to follow up with a visit. And my doctor was Vietnamese. He had a very particular way that he practiced medicine. You're too young to have kidney stone! You eat too much soap! You drink too much dairy, too much soda! Thank goodness I didn't have to see him for a prostate exam. Take a deep breath. Relax!
was using a public restroom a while back, and uh, the urinal had these urinal cakes. Uh, I wouldn't recommend eating one of these. They're not as good as they sound. <laughs> Essentially, they're like a, like a breath mint for the toilet. So it doesn't smell like you know, asparagus and bacon. <laughs> Just me? <laughs> this particular urinal cake had a sign in it that said, don't do drugs, which I think is a positive message we can all get behind, even if it was an odd location. <laughs> but like, how bad does your life have to be that you're taking advice from a toilet? <laughs> how many drug addicts have actually turned their life around from having a urinal cake intervention? <laughs> And the sad truth is somebody has to change these things out on a regular basis, right? And I tell you what, he might not have the same amount of uh, Instagram followers as those models, but that janitor is the real influencer. <laughs> Don't do drugs. <laughs> I'm Freddie Q, and you guys have been great. Thanks for coming out tonight.